Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my channel. Let me introduce myself. I am Stony VR and today I want to demonstrate how to play games with low frame rate. I'm talking about the games where you reach your limit of your PC configuration. Games that are so hardware intense that you will not reach 90 FPS or even 72 FPS. I'm talking about games that you probably try with your Unreal Engine launcher from PreyDog. Or you play Skyrim VR with thousand millions of mods. For this type of case we are going now uh, all, all opportunities and possibilities to smooth things out. And I will try to demonstrate all three methods. So we start with Oculus Link aka Airlink. So, but here we are using today the cable connection. You go to device as long as your headset is connected and you have here a few options. So when you have a VR game where you reach 80 FPS, you can also just lock the frame rate to 72 Hz and it will be smooth, right? 90, 18, 120. This is not all we want to do all I want to demonstrate. I start now a random game, an Unreal Engine game that will push my PC to the limits. I think Robocop is a good example. So a big downside of Link Connection is that you can't change the configuration on the run. This is really possible. With virtual desktop you can just switch while playing the Hertz. As long as you use OpenXR and not SteamVR, but even then, in a few games you are able to switch the Hertz on Virtual Desktop while running the game. And at Steam Link it's the same thing. You can really change most of the time without a restart the Hertz while playing. This is not possible with a Link connection. A very, very, very big downside. Link on the other hand, has a good anti space swap technology. I fucking recommend it to use the Oculus Try tool. It's really hard to get this old software to run flawlessly. I share here now my configurations. Close Oculus Home tool exit. It's the only thing. I try all these nice options, but they are not working with the recent version, at least for me. It's caused problems. So I leave this like that. Here you have really nice power options. So whenever I close Oculus Try Tool, it close Oculus or Meta and switch back to energy safe modus. Also, I have a hotkey. Whenever I press these buttons, I can see the performance. Let me demonstrate. Press now on my keyboard, you can see it. Bam. And you can always check out the frame rate while playing. Also, it may be nice to mention on the Oculus Quest 3, this window is a little bit higher than it was the case back in the day with Rift. This frame rate indicator was always in the way in the view area. Location, the position is much better nowadays. But still not good enough to keep this on while playing. Meta would be nice to adjust this fucking window. So just a keyboard press. And of course, you have the possibility to press here on this virtual keyboard and I can just activate my Oculus Dash the frame rate. Isn't it nice? The normal way would be to open the Oculus Debug Tool and basically you can do the same thing with the Oculus Debug Tool. The only downside you have not the space warp function options that you have here in Oculus Try Tool. Also need to mention whenever you when you start using this Oculus Try tool. The space warp is always off here, I'm set to off, but it, it isn't really off. So whenever you start playing, and uh, space warp is always on. Uh, you need really to do this, this, and now it's really off. When I now restart Oculus Debug Try tool, you can clearly see space warp is really off. So here's only 45 FPS and auto and fake space warp. But this 45 uh, locked a space warp disables uh, uses. There's no need for this. So, but here 
orchestrate tool, look at that now, look at that. You have 45 FPS space warp, you have 30 FPS space warp, and you have 18 FPS space warp. And the results are always different when you use a different Hertz method. So this is actually for 90 FPS. All what you see here is for 90 FPS. When you play on 90 Hertz, you see 45 FPS space warp, 30 FPS space warp, and 18 FPS space warp. Yeah, and on 120, it would be logical. It's 60 FPS, 41 FPS, and so on. But I will demonstrate now while playing, and so you can see what's going on. It's really interesting. So, Space Warp Oculus uh, is a very good Space Warp technology, but uh, I think the virtual desktop has an own better Space Warp technology. The interesting thing about Space Warp on virtual desktop, it used the power of the standalone Quest. The CPU of the Quest 3 get used for the Space Warp technology on virtual desktop. Now let's start a heavy hardware intense game. So I need to wait for a fucking download. No way. We need to choose a different game. Yeah, this is fucked up guys. Shitty updates nowadays. Traffic crazy. So, the mic is way too loud, eh? Shit. Robocop is updating. We have no time for this. And for demonstration purpose we choose now Alien Fire Team Elite. I'm going to inject now. I will turn down the resolution a little bit. So I have still access to the Oculus Dash. This Oculus Dash is often very laggy when I choose high resolution in game. So, how I demonstrate here. Here, here I activate my frame rate indicator. So, wow, I reach almost 100 FPS. Pretty good. Link cable connection at a lower resolution. What I can do now is smooth things out. On 120 FPS, I will get 60 FPS. So it is freaking smooth. Space Warp works very well. Oculus Space Warp, OpenXR, fantastic combination. Whenever I turn, I feel I can see how smooth it is. So 60 FPS locked, smooth as fuck. Yeah. So when you're not able to reach 72 Hz, you can smooth things out on 60 FPS, 120 space warp. But you can even go further. 80 FPS, 80 Hz on 120 Hz is 20, 22 or what is this? Is this 26 or 22? I can't see it. This is smooth, yes, but not acceptable anymore. So the input lag is too high now. I see space warp artifacts all over the place, but it's still crazy to me that this is possible. 30 FPS is 41, would be playable like that. Yeah, you can also choose 80 Hz and 40 FPS space warp. As you can see, the Oculus Try tool offers many space warp options and that's why I still recommend it to play with Oculus Link. Especially now where we have 120 Hz. 41 FPS, absolutely smooth. Sure, I see a little bit space warp uh, artifacts. This is almost perfect in 60 FPS. And of course, and because of that, you can increase the graphic again. So it's still 60 FPS smooth, right? Resolution is higher than it's supposed to be, but 60 FPS smooth things out. Especially when you turn physically now and don't use smooth turn to turn. This is the Oculus Link method. Now we move on to virtual desktop. So this is the Oculus Try tool that offers you many space warp option. The downside is when you choose a high resolution Oculus Dash starts struggling. This is really a crap. I have sometimes to take off my headset and use my real display because this Oculus Dash starts lagging because of higher resolutions, right? It would directly start lagging. But this game runs without space warp pretty good. 72 Hz is still playable. But why not locking to 60 FPS? This game, these games are designed for 60 FPS and you feel that it feels very good playable on 60 FPS space warp. So what you see here is the virtual desktop. So this is not influencing at all anymore. Also, the Oculus Debug tool has nothing to say anymore. And Future Desktop offers you similar options. 
uh, here you can choose the hertz and as long as you use OpenXR you can really change without restarting because there is no Steam VR 120, 120 FPS in combination with Space Warp Bam 60 FPS I'm so quickly inside of the game this is really good so I inject the game again <coughs> here we are virtual desktop now I see flickering stuff like that virtual desktop fix enable so space warp is on unlike oculus dry tool it's not fixing on 60 fps it's fix 120 fps but this is space warp now this is like 60 fps and space warp from virtual desktop feels really good and uh, the space warp technology from virtual desktop using the cpu of the headset to smooth things out and it works very well really 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 good but here you have not like an Oculus try tool, different space warp numbers, whatever. You can only choose different hertz, but you can change the hertz on the run. We demonstrate. You can switch now to 72 FPS. 72 with space warp is like 36 FPS and smooth. So 72 hertz. How it feels? Well, not so good, really. So space warp 72 hertz feels not so well. This is sometimes better on Oculus. Yeah, 36 FPS, smooth, but not the case here. But you can just turn off here and use just 72 hertz. 70 hertz without space warp, smooth. You see, there are so many options to fix the frame rate to get smoothness very well. Yeah, 72 hertz, smooth as fuck no problem at all let's try 80 fps space warp 80 fps space warp would be like 40 fps it's in game all right so space warp 40 fps it's okay i really see on lower frame rates it's really a little bit better on oculus link so 40 fps or 36 fps with oculus link feels really smoother but space warp from virtual desktop is also very good but the best method is still 120 fps, 60 fps, space warp. The games are designed for 60 fps. So this is now like 40 fps with space warp. Despite that there is 80 fps on the frame of display. 90 fps, space warp is like 45 fps. And this is like 45 fps and yeah, very, very smooth. Yeah. Also here, uh, space warp artifacts a little bit seeable, but as long as you not turn with the stick, you don't see this stuff. When you would turn now physically, play wirelessly, which the desktop is wirelessly, you wouldn't see this artifacts when you turn physically. So, but we reach here more than enough FPS. There's no space warp needed for this game, but I use this now just for demonstrating purpose. I think we are done with Witcher desktop. Yeah, you see, you have different methods uh, as long as you use on Oculus. OpenXR, you can switch the frame rate on the run. You can also use OpenXR and SteamVR. OpenXR get used by Oculus or on SteamVR. And OpenVR is just SteamVR. Yeah, you can choose on Steam, on SteamVR, you can activate OpenXR for SteamVR. So OpenXR will run with SteamVR. And here on Oculus set to so the meta quest is using OPXR, but you can also activate OpenXR with SteamVR. Full 120 FPS? No, not really. It's 60 FPS actually. Feels very good. 120 FPS space warp. Bam. I would really recommend it to play many of these Unreal Engine launchers with this combination. 120 FPS space warp. When you not reach enough frame rate. This is really only good when you're not able to reach 72 Hz, right? and this is often the case by Robocop. For my PC I'm using a 3018 RTX uh, Intel processor CPU. I said 12700K, a very good CPU, not the newest anymore, but good enough. Anyway, this was Virtual Desktop Demonstration Space Warp, how to play with lower frame rate. In this case, Space Warp 120 FPS, 60 FPS. It's actually 60 FPS. Despite you see here on the frame rate counter 120 FPS. 
So we're using right now Steam Link, fantastic option that offers you native Steam VR. So here you can choose the Hertz on the run while playing. You can just switch the frame rate. But there's no space warp here. I have no space warp options. Anyway, we try our best now without space warp. So a big downside of Steam VR, Steam, the desktop makes trouble to get used. Look, for example, Unreal Engine Launcher, right? I can't use it here. And I want to use the uh, Unreal Engine, uh, nothing is happening. Look at this shit here. I can't use the desktop. It drives me fucking crazy. So Steam Link forced me to take off the headset every time to use my screen. And this is not acceptable. This is bullshit, this is crap, this is fucked up. So I need to take off my headset now, look on my real monitor to inject the fucking game. And this is not acceptable, this is so annoying! Look at this crap, I need to put my motion controllers away in order to inject now the shit. So, we inject now Steam Link, right? Remember, this is now Steam Link, the last method to connect with your PC. So, we have now a combination. Steam Link is now using... Turn this off. Steam Link is now using OpenXR. Feels great. I have a frame rate indicator here on my hand. I reach full 90 FPS. Wow, pretty good. And you can now go here on VR settings and you can switch the Hertz. Smooth. Freaking smooth 72 Hertz Steam Link. No space warp. There's no space warp option. No. I can't find any space warp options. It's just such a shame. Despite Steam VR has his own space warp option. But I can't see any opportunities to activate space warp on Steam Link. But at least you can just switch the frame rate on the run. This is better than an Oculus on official Meta Link. You can't switch while playing the game. You need to restart the entire software every time. So, so far as I know, there is no space warp here on Steam Link. Not sure, 100%. Correct me when I'm wrong and you know a little bit more than me, but here I can't see any space warp functions here. Space warp settings are not available. Such a fucking shame. And the winner is, in my opinion, Oculus Link. And that's, ladies and gentlemen, is the reason why you should consider to use the link cable connection again. Before the 120 Hz update was there, I was recommending virtual desktop 60 FPS, uh, 120, 120 FPS, 60 FPS, space warp, 90 FPS. That's it. We got it. This is all three connection methods. Steam Link is still native Steam VR. So there are a few games that are designed for Steam VR, running just better with Steam VR. A good example is No Man's Sky. There's still no OpenXR for No Man's Sky. No Man's Sky just runs better with Steam VR or is designed for Steam VR. And this is just one example game that is a Steam VR game. Or I was playing the GTA 5 VR mod from back in the day with motion controls. This old mod was also a Vive mod. A poor native Steam VR VR mod, and for mods like that, I recommend it to try it with Steam Link because they have here really native Steam VR. But to be more accurate, at the moment I'm using Steam VR Open XR, and for real, real, real Steam VR experience, you need to choose Open VR on Unreal Engine Launcher. That's it.